left side. Chris Jones smokes. Philip Rivers right back at the 40. He's not banking on his the skill that he's been blessed with. He ends up Celtic. Great catch. Touchdown. Kansas City. Hill go. the Touchdown, Kansas City. Car's in trouble. He is going to be pulled down and sacked. Justin Houston. The Chiefs' first home playoff victory in a quarter century. I'm Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs, along with B.J. Kissel. I'm going to start with defense. The Colts were number one in the National Football League in third down conversions. B.J., they were 0 for 9 in this game. It's simple. That's that's the story of the game was the Chiefs defense coming out and making a statement. Mitch, it's funny because we talked about third down conversions and third down defense all week long. And for them to come out and play the way they did, it wasn't just one guy. It wasn't just D Ford or Justin Houston getting pressure. It was the linebackers flowing and stopping a running game for the Colts early to where they kind of had to abandon it early. Basically gave up on the running game. It was getting pressure on Andrew Luck, getting him to move his feet. And then it was the defensive back. So it was a 50-50 ball. They went out and made plays. There's no sliding scale. This was a dominant performance by the Chiefs defense when everybody thought it was going to be a shootout they came out and made a statement now also you mentioned the three sacks the Colts were number one in the NFL at preventing sacks and a giant sack and strip by D Ford after the uh, Chiefs had turned it over but let's talk offense here and the tone that was sent early on for the first five possession scores yeah. and Mahomes and the way he played. Yeah, to me it was, I think Andy Reid set the tone early for the offense in this game with the fourth and one. Going forward on fourth down, those converted, they led to points. I think it established early that they were gonna be aggressive and they weren't doing some trick play. They ran it right down the throat, right down the heart of the Colts defense in those situations. To me, it sent a statement to the entire offense. You guys love to get off a fat, to a fast start. You've done it most of the year, if not all year. Again, you dominated the first quarter. And, and winning the time of possession battle today, I thought you did it was just outstanding clock management. Yeah, well, listen, Williams uh, ran his tail off. Uh, really, both Williams. We got, we got the dynamic duo back there. So, uh, But uh, Damon, he, he really played good football and ran aggressive. And, um, you know, the, the offensive line, it all starts there, just like it does the defense of the D line and the linebacker, outside backers. Rush and the inside guys are all kind of the, the bigs. You get into the postseason, and bigs on both sides of the ball matter. So um, I was proud of those guys. Damian Williams with 129 yards today. How about answering the uh, after you get the blocked punt? Your defense goes back out there. They seem to be playing with some attitude, as they always do when they're here. Yeah, no, uh, they were playing with some attitude. Uh, um, I'm, I'm glad I was on their team, and uh, it, it was a it was a good thing. Listen, I've been doing this 30 years. Uh, your work here today, a lot of memories in this building, a lot of memories throughout that. Your work here today will take me to just my second AFC championship. I know you've been to a few more than that, but talk about how special that is, how hard it is just to get to that game. Yeah, it, no, it's tough. I mean, it's a special bunch. I mean, these kids have worked their tail off to be in this position. We've got great fans. We've got good football players, good coaches, and uh, tremendous ownership that's given us an opportunity to progress this far and and uh brett veach you got to give you know your hat off to him for the people that he's brought in here these young guys are playing their tail off too and mixed in with those veterans pretty damn good head coach as well let me just tell you I, I don't know whether to congratulate you or thank you i really don't what an outstanding season it's been and now you're just one game away yeah we need to keep it going i, I told the guys too you know that's a special number right now so we'll take one of them at a time but um we're glad that we're here next sunday man we need everybody out here it's going to be cold and all that, but who cares? Strap it on and let's go. You guys were unbelievable today. Let's roll, right? Let's roll. Well, obviously, you know, this team has been in position to get to this spot before, and people talk about the quarterback, and obviously Patrick Mahomes makes a difference. Yeah. Great player. But what did you see in this game, Dana, that wasn't there in the Titans' loss or past losses that kept the Chiefs from getting to this point? Well, what I saw specifically in this game, Tom, was the ability – for this team to counter punch. We all know in the football game throughout the course of four quarters, you're going to have some ups and downs. And in the past, we didn't see consistently the team step back and when they were scored upon, step back and throw another haymaker and counter punch to nullify the momentum shift. This game, in this game, this day, this Chiefs team really stepped up in those fashions. You had the block punt, they were able to step back and then go ahead with the score on the next drive. Each and every time something positive happened for the Colts, the Chiefs were able to counterpunch in a major way. I know a lot of people are going to remember this game 
uh, by how they got there through the snow, yeah. sitting through it. Did you see the conditions in any way affect how both teams wanted to go about putting their game plan into, into, into practice? Well, I was, I was very refreshed and I was very happy. I came into the stadium ready for the pregame show we do on Facebook Live with Chiefs, uh, with, with BJ Kissel and the Chiefs. And I saw Patrick Mahomes as I was walking in. Patrick Mahomes was coming off the field, no sweatshirt on, <laughs> no uh, overcoat on, nothing, and his hands were clean, no gloves on. And I said, oh, this is going to be special. When I saw the quarterback in that kind of mindset, throwing the ball, and you saw him warming up, there weren't any, it wasn't anything emphatic about him yep. trying to stay warm, keep his hands warm, or anything. I said, oh, this is going to be a normal day <laughs> at the office. It's going to affect Andrew Luck more than it's going to affect Patrick Mahomes, and that bowed true. We saw that first throw as a bullet. His high school coach told me before the game, we asked him, has he played in snow before being from Texas? He goes, we had freezing rain sleet his senior year of high school. It was way worse than this. Yeah. He was fine. Yeah. Obviously. All right, Travis Kelsey, one of his top pass catchers. One-on-one, -on -one, that's coming up right after this. Mahomes scrambling to the right side, holding it, pump faking, diving for the far front pylon. Does he have it? Touchdown, Kansas City. Mahomes runs it in. He's now the all-time receiver in Chiefs playoff history. 108 yards in this game. Many thought you would have a lane to catch and get free. What about this game? Particularly the answer when you get the 30-yard uh, reception to come back and answer the block field goal. I'll tell you what. Uh, how about that defense? Huh? That, uh, that defense played their tail off. We love them for it. Um, hitting their stride right on time, and it's, uh, it's fun, man. It's fun when everybody's out there making plays. I mean, Damian Williams, you, you name it, man. We had guys out there stepping up to the plate. Finally got Sammy back out on the field. It's just a, it's a fun atmosphere right now. Everybody's playing for each other. Travis, you're talking about the atmosphere. I got to ask about what Arrowhead Stadium was like. These fans, you talk about the playoffs coming back to Arrowhead to, to pull out this win. Just as a player, what was it like for you out on the field with this crowd, what they were giving you guys? Man, they, they, gave, they gave me chills, man. Before the game, uh, right at the end, I mean, it's, it's, what this city deserves is, uh, is far more than what we've already got. I mean, not, not just a one playoff win, but another playoff win and, and another shot at the Super Bowl. So, I mean, it's just uh, it's, it's amazing. I know you guys are going to be out there rocking for us next year or next week, I mean, and it's uh, – it's just, just going to be a fun electric night. I can already feel it. You mentioned Damian Williams, that in calling the play-by-play, -play, when I look at the replay, you were making many of the key blocks. People see the 108 yards receiving. You were drilling dudes in this game. Um, just trying to be accountable for my, my, my teammates. Um, I know I've kind of lacked in that area at, at points in uh, some games, and it's just um, it's a nonstop effort and, and conscious to, to be there for my guys. And um, you know what? We'll go into next week. Uh, Work on some fundamentals, work on some things uh, and on whatever defense we end up playing, and sure enough, um, go out there with that same type of effort and same type of mentality. Coach's decision early in the game on the fourth downs to go for it and to run it right up the middle, just what kind of message did that send not only to you guys and what he was trying to accomplish, but also to the Colts' defense? I mean, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I love it when, when Coach Reed uh, dials it up, especially in uh, certain situations and really challenges the other team to uh, you know step up to the plate. Um, and he just has nonstop. He has is all the confidence in the world in us. And you know what? That's that's all you can ask for in a player is to be put in an opportunity to make plays. And sure enough, Coach Reed does it better than anybody else. Final question: You've been in this league since 2013. You're going to play in an AFC Championship game next week here, wearing a red uniform. What does that mean for you? Oh uh, man, we'll see. We'll see what it means to me. I mean, I, I, right now I'm just uh, I'm happy for our guys to even be able to get in this opportunity. I'm thankful for the for the organization sticking with me this long and and uh, and sticking with these guys to, to keep everybody in a core group of guys together um, and believing in us because you know what we're uh, we believe in each other and we got a lot to prove. Travis Kelsey had to get out of an MRI machine last year and watch as the uh, Chiefs blew the lead against the Titans. Mm -hmm. I mean, how badly do you think he wanted to redeem that game because of the injury he had? wasn't his fault. But to be able to get back out there and have the performance he had, how, oh. how special was that feel for him? Oh, it's huge. And you know what? I'm surprised that he was able to answer that last question by Mitch because I'm sitting here and my emotions get the best of me. Just the fact of that question, having the feeling of playing an AFC West, I mean, sorry, AFC championship game mm -hmm. at Arrowhead next week, 
it makes me speechless just to think <laughs> about the emotions that would flow through. So it's great to see Travis Kelsey. Obviously, he had an outstanding game today, and, and he's ready for this opportunity. But, I mean, it was, it, it's special. It's a special feeling that a lot of the Chiefs fans and former Chiefs players mm -hmm. uh, will feel throughout this week. Well, overall, it seemed as if the Chiefs, they got off to the fast start. They felt like they were in control, but there was a time when maybe – we were unsure yeah. if the Colts might get right back into it. This is our pivotal moment of the game, Danon. And uh, coming up after the punt block touchdown, the drive that ensues. Well, the Chiefs were up 17-0. The, they have to punt. They're forced to punt. And the Colts block the punt and get the seven points on the board. Then subsequently, you have a 10-play, 75-yard TD drive that takes up four minutes and 16 seconds. So. Going back to what I said earlier, the punch-counterpunch mentality that the Chiefs came up with in this game and to cap it off in this drive and getting in the end zone, not settling for a field goal, not just having a, 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 an okay drive, but Patrick Mahomes tucking the ball and running, getting to the <laughs> pylon and scoring six for the Chiefs to snatch the, any sort of momentum from the Colts to me was the pivotal point of the game. That was the first rushing touchdown in Chiefs postseason history by a quarterback ever. <laughs> so pretty significant, significant game for a lot of reasons and another Mahomes star-making moment. We're going to hear from a lot of his teammates inside the locker room next here on Chiefs Rewind. The Chiefs exercise demons of playoffs past here at Arrowhead, defeating the Colts 31-13 in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. They now move on to the AFC Championship game, where they will host it here at Arrowhead Stadium for the first time in franchise history. All of the players inside that locker room tonight were elated at the victory, but they know that the AFC Championship is not their ultimate goal. Uh, it is nice. It's nice for the fans especially who uh, seem to have, have been traumatized a bit by uh, postseason uh, lack of success here. But uh, it's a good thing for the franchise to uh, get this victory to do it in the way we did it. And, um, I mean, total team victory, you know, the defense, I mean, <laughs> game of the year, how incredible. You know, offensively came out hot, obviously, you know, kind of petered out there a little bit, but big drive to finish it. Special teams held it down. I mean, the one bad play, but for some bad kicks on the other side, got the ball back, got a penalty to extend our drive. So uh, pretty awesome all the way around. You know, I think our energy was a lot higher. You know, definitely credit, credit defense for that. But, uh, you know, anytime you're out there making plays, you know, that's, that's going to create energy. And I think that's what we did coming out early today, which just kept on making plays. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, anytime you lose momentum in a game, you just – you, uh, you can't let it affect you. Gotta, I mean, I think one of the big things is uh, being a professional in this league is to handle adversity like a professional. And, you know, you got to move on move on to the next play. And, uh, you know, we were able to do that a little bit. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's every time we get the ball with a new series, our goal is to go, go get points. Uh, it doesn't always end up perfect, but uh, just handle adversity. What do you think about the defensive performance? Oh, they playing their best ball. I think they just got to keep it up and um, keep helping us out. When we don't drive the ball, we got um, get three and outs. And uh, we just got to continue to feed off each other. I'm sure we'll talk more defense. The pass rush was incredible. But if only D Ford or Justin Houston or Chris Jones, maybe Chris Jones can, can make sidearm passes. <laughs> this is time for this social segment. And it's Patrick Mahomes' time. All right, Charlotte Wilder and uh, reacting to the sidearm throw that Mahomes makes. Just unbelievable stuff. Uh, insane. Like, honestly, how? Uh, this, is, this is appropriate, Charlotte. The Ringer, we've stopped asking how he makes these throws. Have you stopped wondering how he makes these throws? I don't wonder. That's a great catch by Travis Kelsey. Now, I was very fortunate to play with Joe Montana, and I actually <laughs> saw him throw a curveball with a football, Tom. So okay. I'm not surprised at that last tweet asking if it was a curveball because I legitimately saw one of the greatest quarterbacks ever throw a curveball with a football. So Yeah, Mahomes might have a dirty slider. Yeah. He outdueled Michael Kopech in high school. <laughs> Top prospect for the White Sox. He's got it in the arsenal. Um, the guys who help out Patrick Mahomes, the offensive line, what did you see 
overall with the offense, I, as, as Mitchell Schwartz said, petered out maybe a little bit, but to establish things early, what set the tone? Well, I thought what set the tone was – First and foremost, it was a very clean game. This was uh, the least penalized game, I believe, that the Chiefs have had all season long, especially on the offensive side. So first and foremost, I have to give those guys credit up front. The big uglies really stepped up, technically sound with their pass protection. Now, there was a lot of bodies still around Patrick Mahomes, and he did his thing in, in, with his escapability and making plays and something out of nothing. But the guys up front really did a phenomenal job, both in the passing game and the running game, really keeping the Colts' defense at bay. Okay, we'll talk defense coming up next. The sack master himself, Justin Houston, one-on-one -on -one here on Chiefs Rewind. Six. Pressured up the middle. He's going to be sacked. He's buried. Justin Houston came through and piled snow on top of Luck. Houston with one of the biggest sacks of his career. Well, we're joined by one of the greatest uh, defensive players in Chiefs history, Justin Houston. They came in number one in the NFL in third down conversions. You held him to 0 for 9. How did you guys do this? I think we gelling at the right time with our defense. So we're talking, we're having fun, and we're on the same page from the front end to the back end. So as long as we, could, we keep communicating and stay on the same page and continue to focus on us and don't listen to nothing outside this locker room, because we know that's the only thing that matters is what's in this locker room. So we just continue to focus on us to get better. Over the last two weeks, defense has allowed nine points here at Arrowhead Stadium. Just what kind of statement do you feel like you guys are making uh, here at the end of the season, then peaking, like you said? Like I said, it's, it's about us. It's, it's, we don't, it don't matter what people talk about outside this locker room. We know who we are and what we have in the locker room, so we don't doubt each other. We just continue to get better, and we want to talk. We gelling at the right time. Beginning of the season, we had a lot of new pieces. So you got young guys, you got guys from different teams, so they're learning the defense inside and out. The only way to get better is experience. And I think through the season, that's what we did. We done been through a lot of ups and downs. And this is the time to pick it up. And I think we did that as a unit. They were also number one in the NFL, Justin, in preventing sacks. You get two. D gets one on a sack strip that answered after they uh, were able to get the ball in a sudden change. What about your ability to pressure him and he's hard to sack? We know that to win a game at this time, you got to put pressure on the quarterback. You got to make him uncomfortable. So we talked about it, and like I said, we couldn't do this without our, our back end covering well. So we was on the same page, everybody doing their job, and we just having fun. Opportunity for the franchise to host the AFC title game for the first time in franchise history. Just what does that mean to you to know that you're going to be back here next weekend at Arrowhead playing for a chance to go to the Super Bowl? It means a lot for us, for the city, and for the D-line. That means everything, because we know the crowd going to be rocking, and we got the crowd into it. That means the snap count going to be on our side. So we can get that. That's all we want as a pass rush. Final question. You have seen to kept this team glued together and the defense, even when it was difficult. What about giving this locker room perspective, being a veteran? Just staying focused on the task at hand and telling everybody this thing is not over. We still got a lot of work to do, and we still working. So stay focused, stay, continue to take care of your bodies, and stay focused on the task at hand. There's a smile from Justin Houston after a, a real big game for him, real big game for the defense. D. Ford said afterwards, building on the Oakland game, and it was clear that showed them something. And uh, But this was a much better offense, let's be honest. Great performance for them. Let's go ahead and talk Danon's chief observations. The three things that stood out to him, number one, the curse is gone, Dana. Yeah, there's an old song, the thrill is gone. Well, the thrill <laughs> is here, but the curse is gone right now, Tom. I was part of that 1995 season, 96 playoffs, January 6th or 7th, I believe. Okay. We started this. It's so refreshing that it ended today. I mean, 1994, I was three years old being sung Roger Miller before bed every night. Uh, defense showing up, part of breaking the curse and just over and over, they got stops. Yeah, they got the job done today, and it's refreshing to see that they were able to grow from that last game against the Raiders to this playoff game. And you consider all the defensive penalties, this team being penalty-driven uh, uh, all season long, they didn't get their first defensive penalty until 34 seconds left in the game. Wow. 
Amazing step up for this Chiefs defense. Last time you saw 0 for 9 on third downs in a playoff game? What? Yeah. Incredible. 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 Especially with a, a quarterback like Andrew Luck. Didn't seem to be comfortable from the start and throughout the finish. Constant pressure. Great defensive coverage on the back end. And this defense really stepped up in a major way. Yeah, people talked about that Colts offensive line. Well, they're on the couch now. All right, Arrowhead, you came through. <laughs> you came through. Yes. I saw this on Twitter, six and a half plus hours before the game, lines of cars ready to file into Arrowhead Stadium and get the barbecue going and the tailgate going, and they did not uh, cease to uh, obviously be a factor in right. this game. The 12th man was real in Arrowhead Stadium, and that was a huge factor. We asked Jordan Lucas after the game, what got the defense so juiced up? And he goes, how juiced was the crowd? Yes. There you go. Fed through it. All right. From the podium, Coach Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and some more Justin Houston. That's coming up next on Chiefs Rewind. Listen, uh, it was a great, I thought, a great all-around effort. I thought our defense stepped up and just did a heck of a job against what I think is a good offense, a great quarterback, uh, receivers, tight ends, a running back that's been on fire. So um, I thought they did a very nice job. And uh, the offense, I thought, did, did some good things too. So, And then special teams likewise. So all the way around, everybody contributed. Um, it's important this time of the year that you do that. And and um, you know you, when, when you bring when you bring that and the fans uh, into Arrowhead, it's a it's tough, man. It's tough on on other teams, and we appreciate it. And we'll see you see you next Sunday, right? But I tell you, yes, I, I love the energy and the charge that they came out with. There was no holding your head down or feeling sorry for ourselves and none, none of that. They just came out and they played. Uh, I mean, it, it was a great win. I mean, the defense. Uh, stepped up big, played played great all game long. Offense, we started fast, had a kind of a dry spell, but we finished it off uh, in the end. So uh, it's a great team win. Uh, we got we get the uh, opportunity to play here again next week, so we're, we're excited for that opportunity. Yeah, I, I think the, my favorite thing was finishing the game at the end. Uh, we've been in those, those situations this year, and I feel like we haven't executed to our standard. And uh, for us to go out there and finish that game with those big runs, especially that last one, I mean, it shows the, the attitude and effort that you'll need in order to win football games. It, it's huge. I mean, these fans, you feed off that energy that they bring every single week. Uh, that They're so intense. I mean, it really is surreal. It's, it's crazy. Uh, you, you feel it the moment you step in the stadium. And uh, it, it's, it's an honor and it's a truly an opportunity that we get to, to play in front of these, guys, these fans. Still partying here, and why not? The Chiefs get the victory. First home playoff victory in 25 years. But I want to ask you, BJ, about the Chiefs now playing complimentary football. You know it's the NFL's best offense, but the last two weeks, this defense has been outstanding. What does that mean going into the AFC Championship game? It means everything. You, you wanted this team to peak at the right time, and now we're seeing it from the defense. It's allowed nine points in two games at Arrowhead Stadium. There's a lot made of the splits of road versus home, but that's why you go out and dominate the way they did during the regular season to get these games at home. Nine points. They held the Colts today to 263 yards of total offense. That's the second fewest yards they scored all season long. So they came out, again, it wasn't just a solid performance. They came out and dominated this game, and the confidence couldn't be higher for this team right now. Chiefs Kingdom, you got to love this. Got to keep it going, though. Len Dawson, Ed Podolak. Buck Buchanan, we can go all the way down the line. Never played for the Lamar Hunt Trophy in Kansas City. This group of fans and players will play for that trophy in Lamar Hunt Stadium next week. This whole week was something that Chiefs fans were never going to forget because you have that nervous, anxious feeling. We've said it since training camp that things just felt different. And it wasn't, it wasn't a line, it wasn't any of that. It just things felt different going into this season. We've seen it build and build and build. We felt it all week. And then to come out and perform the way they did, they didn't just win the game, they dominated the game. And now, like you said, coming back to Arrowhead Stadium with a chance to do it again in the biggest game in Arrowhead Stadium history. Get chills just thinking about it, Mitch. Let's go, let's <laughs> roll. The Kansas City Chiefs will host the AFC Championship they did it by getting to that game, winning this game 31 to 13.
All right, it's a game a lot of people are going to remember for a long time. The Chiefs kill the curse, playoff game at Arrowhead Stadium. Let's break it down a bit further. we got a graphic here for you. Just some of the key elements as to why the Chiefs not only won this game, but won by quite a bit. Uh, break down what really stands out to you here, Dana. Well, what jumps out to me, obviously, is that first column. Third down conversion for the Colts. 0 for 9 on the day. The day. They were not able to extend drives and, and obviously put any kind of pressure on this Chiefs team all afternoon long. Very efficient by the defense, but to hold the goose egg over the whole over the head of the Colts was amazing. And people talked about the Colts' run game, the offensive line. Are you surprised by the huge discrepancy in time of possession? Not necessarily surprised. I, I think it's definitely opposite of what we've seen all season long because this Chiefs offense has been a big strike type of offense right. that can get points on the board relatively quickly. But they were able to capitalize on the 0 for 9 factor and then keep the ball on their side as well. The other part that we hadn't seen very much of, we talked about it a little bit earlier, yeah. the lack of penalties for the Chiefs. I think those three aspects of this game is what catapulted them to this victory. Okay, so as of this taping, we don't know who they're playing yet. We have the Chargers, we have the New England Patriots, we know where it's gonna be. Uh, but if there's an opponent that you'd prefer the Chiefs to play, Dane, and who would that be? Tom, I've had a vision. I've, been, I've had a vision all week long okay. of recognizing this win yeah. and then Phillip Rivers <laughs> walking across the field, <laughs> shoulders slumped down, head down, having to shake the hand of Patrick Mahomes as the Chiefs beat the Chargers to go to the Super Bowl. I'm sticking to that story. I think the Chargers are going to beat the Patriots. Okay. And the fact that you have Ali Frazier, three, at Arrowhead with the Chargers coming here to play the Chiefs, that's my vision right now. You don't want the passing of the torch. You want Rivers Mahomes. I want humility. Ali Frazier, I want three. humility. I want to see Rivers talking all that <laughs> trash that he does, as clean and PG as it is, yep. to come over, shoulders slumped, and have to get that handshake to Patrick Mahomes. I'll take that any day of the week. Spoken like a true chief. <laughs> Spoken like a true chief. All right, guys, we really appreciate you watching this edition of Chiefs Rewind. Dan and Hughes, Tom Martin, want to thank everybody here at our 65 Toss Power Trap team. AFC Championship game. Here come the Chiefs. We'll talk to you after that one. And possibly a trip to the Super Bowl after that. But I'm not putting the cart before the horse. We'll see you next time. Chiefs Rewind is brought to you by Ford the official car and truck of the Kansas City Chiefs. And by Community America Credit Union, the official banking partner of the Kansas City Chiefs.